instruction says E5.4 grams of aluminium was discharged by 3.6 amperes of what current, which is allowed to flow for an unknown time through what? Aluminium, molten solution of aluminium chloride. Calculate the time of flow of the current. The fastest cheat to be used in this calculation is mass discharged equal to ramit over chaffa, ramit over chaffa. Ram is equal to relative atomic mass of the element. Each have I and T, that's current and time. Then char is charge present on the ion of the element. Y far is one far a day, one far a day, which is 96,500. So the cheat is ramit over chaffa. Uh, what is M from the question? 5.4 equal to what the relative atomic mass of aluminum? Hello, this is Sir Majesty Easy World, the easy world of science. Today we will take a look at the uh, first Faraday law of electrolysis, the cheats on how to use it to do calculations and you will never find it difficult again. First, by equation, the law says that the mass of an element discharged during electrolysis is directly proportional to the quantity of charge supplied. In other words, the quantity of electricity supplied. That's M is for mass, where Q is for quantity. Then how we measure quantity is by measuring time multiplied by the current flowing. That's the current and the time of a flow. Now, for us to remove the sign of proportionality, we need to put a constant. So we have that M is directly proportional. That's M equal to E, IT, where E is called electrochemical equivalent. So if you are able to find the value of E, for any element, this is a constant of course, but unlike other constants, it varies with one element. Like copper has its own constant, copper has its own electrochemical equivalent, sodium has its own, zinc has its own, depending on the relative molecular mass of uh, each element. So from the definition of E, if you apply this directly, you will solve every question involving mass for that of first law. First, electrochemical equivalent by definition is the mass of elements discharged. That is, mass of uh, an element discharged by one column of electricity. By one column of uh, electricity. Then we'll keep it there, which means if you are able to find the mass of any element that one column of electricity will discharge, that means an electrochemical equivalent. But in most calculations, the E is neglected and taken as a constant because it can be negligible because the value is very small. But if you can put it, you find your answer straight. For us to get the electrochemical equivalent of elements, we first of all have to consider the term Faraday, one Faraday. What is one Faraday? One Faraday should be defined as the minimum quantity of electricity required to discharge one mole of electron. For us to derive the value of Faraday, we should start by the fact that one mole of any substance, according to Avogadro, will contain what? One mole of any substance, according to Avogadro, will contain 6.022140076 times 10 raised to the power 23 repeating units, in other words, per mole, which means we are looking at the quantity of electricity required to discharge 6.022140076 times 10 raised to the power 23 electrons, and that is what we call one Faraday. Then, it means now that we have to find out that F is talking about charge multiplied by Avogadro's number. Why E here means the charge present on one electron. We are talking about 6.022140076 times 10 is part 23. How many will now be in one electron now? From experiments, scientists were able to discover that uh, the charge present on one electron on 
one electron should be what? Help me out. One point what? Six zero two one seven six six three three four four times ten raised to the power minus nineteen. So if we substitute the two constants that has been discovered, this is colu, this is per mole. And we are talking about the quantity of electricity required to discharge this number of uh, electrons, sorry. Why one have this? So for us to get one Faraday, we have that E is what? 1.6 what? 0 to, you should be pressing your calculator. Times 10 is the power of what? Minus 19 multiplied by what? Avogadro's uh, number, which is 6.0. 0221706 times 10 raised to the power 23. What will it give you? It will give you around. Like 6,485. Okay. We have what? 96,485 points. What? 33212. What? 33212. What? Columns of electricity. And this is the 2019 redefinition of uh, Faraday's constant. This is the value for correct Faraday. But in most exam bodies, they accept approximating this as 96,500. But this should be the real value. So we have now discovered that uh, 96,485.33212 columns of electricity is required to discharge what? one mole of what? Electron. So one mole of electron which contains this number is a normal fact. We can now go back to electrochemical equivalence. We try to find out what should be the electrochemical equivalence of each what? Element. For us to find it out, if you pick copper for example, or that of copper, the charge present on copper 2 ion is what? Plus 2 which means that copper 2 ion requires 2 moles of what? Electron. To get you to reduce the copper ion to copper metal. From this half cell equation, remember that to gain means reduction. Copper 2 ion, that's green electrolysis, you have reduction and oxidation. This should be the one taking place at the cathode. So copper 2 ion gaining to electron will reduce copper 2 ion to copper. Then remember that this is two moles of electron, and one mole of electron is equivalent to one Faraday. So we can now replace this two E with what? Two F. Then the molar mass of uh, copper is 63.5, or approximately 64 grams. So what does it mean? It stands that two times what? What is the value of one Faraday? 96,000 what? 500, right? Yes. We will discharge what? 63.5 grams of what? Copper. And we say that electrochemical equivalent is the mass, which is X, mass of, let's take for copper now, mass of copper discharged no longer by two Faradays, but by one column of electricity. Which means if two times 96,500 will discharge 63.5 grams, whatever one column of electricity discharges, represents the electrochemical equivalent of copper. Press, let's go. What will it be? We have 193,000. Uh, what will 2 times 96,500? 193 what? 1,000 X is equal to what? 63.5. So that X is equal to what? 63.5 divided by what? 193,000. It should give you about 0 0.0034. So, uh huh. 0 0.0034. So, uh-huh. 0.0039. Which is approximately 33 gram. Because that's it. It means that the electrochemical equivalent of copper is what? 0 0.0033 0 0 0 grams. Convert to standard form, it becomes 3.3 .3 times what? Times 10 is the power 1, 2, 3, 4, minus 4. That's the electrochemical equivalent of a copper. Then, to apply this in solving, let's assume you have a question like this. 
what mass of copper is discharged, what mass of what copper is discharged when a current of 0 0.37 amperes is allowed to flow is allowed to flow through molten copper two salt through molten copper two tetra oxowat sulfate six for forty five minutes. Now we have to go back to our first Faraday's law which says that what mass is equal to E over what E multiplied by current multiplied by time. I is what? Current in what? Amperes. Then T is what? Time in what? In seconds. Okay. While our E is for copper is what? 0 0.0033, right? Yes. Okay. Now we take a look at this and substitute immediately. You can now say the mass discharge is equal to what? 0 0.0033 times what? Times uh, 0 0.37 times 45 times 60. 2,700. 2,700. Uh-huh. Multiply stretch. What do you have? Be careful because there are a lot of zeros. 0 0.3296. 0 0.3296. 0 0.3296. So which will be 0 0.33 grams, right? Yes. Of copper. Now, this is when you have known the words. You have to record this. This is a condition where you know the E of copper. But if you don't know the electrochemical equivalence of copper, see the long way you have to follow now. You have to start with what? Half cell equation of copper, which says what? Copper 2 plus, plus 2E will give you what? 63.5, right? Yes. Let's still put it that way. We'll give you copper. Uh -huh. Because 2 far a day, convert to mass, we'll give you what? 63.5 grams, right? Yes. Oh, yeah, what is 2F? Already known. Right? Yes. We we'll discharge what? 63.5. Then you go back and remember that Q is equal to what? I T. This is in column. So you have to go and solve. Uh, what will it be now? Current is 0 0.37 amperes times what? 2,700. What will it be? 999 quantity. Then you go back now and you restate this thing, which says that 19,000. 300 will give you what? 63.5. Uh -huh. What will 999 give you? 0 0.32868. And at the end, what will it be? 0 0.33. 0 0.33 what? Yeah. Are you seeing now? At least this is short and straightforward. And this one will help you even if you don't know where to start writing. Since you have just noted the electrochemical equivalent of copper, you can straight away substitute here. Because of the fact that this is 0 0.000, that's why they say it's negligible. But if you are able to find what it is, know that copper is 0 0.00033. In other words, 3.3 .3 times 10 is to power minus 4. You can substitute for that uh, E and you get your answer. Instead of undergoing this. Then, another sheet that we will use, apart from using electrochemical equivalent, is this. Let's assume this equator remains. And the question is, what mass of copper is discharged? When what? A current of uh, 0 0.37 amperes is what? Allowed to flow through the molten copper two tetrahedrons of the seas for 45 minutes. Now, you have this. M is equal to, say, ram Q over chaffa. Say it. Ram Q over chaffa. Again, Ram Q over chaffa. where M is the mass you are being asked to find. M stands for what? Mass, mass of the element. That's the mass of the element discharged. 
This RAM means relative atomic mass of the element. Relative what? Atomic, atomic mass. mass of the element. So by definition, our RAM means uh, relative, atomic relative mass. what? Atomic mass of the element. Why the Q there is what? Quantity. Quantity of electricity supply. Quantity of uh, electricity supply. Whereas our char there stands for what? Char there stands for charge present on the ion of the element. Charge present on the what? Present on the ion of the element. Then our farm is Faraday. That means our what? One Faraday. Or you can go straight and say that M is equal to Ramit over Chaffa. Again, that's replacing Q with what? IT. Ramit over what? Chaffa. The term remains the same. So let's apply this for that question. Uh -huh. What's M equal to? What's the relative atomic mass of copper in question? They will give it. Copper is what? 63.5. One Faraday is equal to. We have derived it 96,500 volumes. So, with the regard to copper, what do you have? 63.5. Uh -huh. Multiply by what is the I there? That's current. 0 0.37. 0 0.37. Then, what's the time? What was five minutes. Two, Times 60. 2,700. That's 2,700, right? Yeah. Divide by what's the charge present on copper? Because that's the element there. Two now. Two, yeah. So the charge should be two times what? 96,500. Okay. 63.5 times 0. 63,400. 63,436.5. Divide by 19,300. 0.3286 at the end. 0.3. So we have the cheats. You die, you use the Rami to over chaffa. Then the advantage of this formula is that even when relative atomic mass was given, time was given, current was given, but you are asked to find the charge. You simply make the charge the subject of the formula. Let's try taking another example. Let's try taking another example. Are you there? says E5.4 grams of aluminium was discharged by 3.6 amperes of what current which is allowed to flow for an unknown time through what aluminium molten solution of aluminium chloride calculate the time of flow of the current okay aluminium is 27 one for a day remains what 96,500 then we go back to our ramit over chaffa so if you apply it you get an answer straight Mass discharge is equal to Ramit over Chaffa. Uh, what is M from the question? 5.4 equal to what the relative atomic mass of aluminum? 27 given now. Multiply by the current given, which is what? 3.6 watts ampere. Right? Then what is the time? T unknown. Then divide by what now? What's the charge present on aluminium? Three. Three times what? 96,500. Okay, what do we have here? We have that 27 times 3 point what? 60 is equal to 5.4 times what? 3 times 96,500. So that T is equal to 5.4 times 3 times 96,500 divided by 27 times 3.6, right? Yes. Okay, yes. By figure, call this thread. Did you, uh -huh. 1, 500, Separately. 1, what? 1, 5, 6, 3. 1, 5, 6, what? 3, mm -hmm. 3, 0, 0. 
three three zero zero like this, right? So then what is this? Ninety seven. Twenty seven times three point six. Give me a three values, please. Seven point two. Nine two. Two. I divide. What do we have here? We we'll each up to five days. One six zero eight. One six zero eight what? Three. What? Three three three. One six zero eight three point. Three three. three. Yeah. Continued. Yeah. Seconds, right? Yes. That's the correct answer. If you want to know the hours involved, you divide by sixty. Ten or more. Okay, we'll take another example. Make the mass of what? Zinc deposited. When a current of seven point two amperes when a current of what? 7.2 amperes is allowed to flow through molten zinc salt through molten zinc salt for an hour 30 minutes for an hour 30 minutes Zinc remains what? Molar mass of zinc should be 65 and the one for a day is still 96,500 and they say what mass of zinc is discharged when a current of what? When a current of 7.2 amperes is allowed to flow for an hour 30 minutes. Oh yeah, let's go. We use our what? Mass is equal to what? Ram it over Chaffa. What will it be now? Mass is equal to a heavy fast. 65 times 7.2 times 7.2 times you now convert. Sum up. How many minutes? 5,400 seconds. Let's take it easy. We have 60 plus 30, right? That's 90 times 60. Converting to seconds now. Then divide by what's the charge on zinc? 2 times what? 96,500. What are we getting there? Uh -huh. Take it separately. 2 what? 2527. 257. I'm not getting it. 252. Okay. Divide by 19. Right? Yes. Uh, what do you have? 13.0. What? 13. What? 094. 094. That's 13.1 what? Grams of what? Zinc was. Discharge. But if not ram it to Vachafa, how are we going to solve it? How we will solve? We we'll start by stating one uh, zinc plus two, right? Uh, let's check the one that is a bit easier. They are all easy. But the advantage of this ram it to Vachafa is that when you don't even understand what we are, as the steps you will follow, immediately you have the ram it to Vachafa, you go to the question and find out they are asking you what time or what is the current or what is the mass you can easily substitute because often when you use the lay down process students may not know where to start but with that cheat ramito bachafa you just know the terms and make the one you are looking for subject of the formula understood Five gram, right? Then what will three eight 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 zero come discharge? Two seven. Two what? Two five two seven. Mm -hmm. Two hundred. Two hundred divided by one ninety three zero zero. 
18.09. Which is what? 18.1. So the Rami to Batafa is working. Let's take another rough example where you are asked to find the relative atomic mass. Or we solve back with this figures that we know, assuming we don't know the relative atomic what, mass. So such an example would be like discharged by zero uh, seven point what two amperes of what amperes for what let's say in an hour thirty minutes. Eh? If the charge present on X, if the charge they will give you that if the charge present on the what ion of x is plus 2. Calculate the relative what? Molecular mass of eh, x. Still telling you that 1 Faraday is equal to what? 96,500. The solution is just to use what? Ramit was M is equal to Ramit over Chaffa. So what will it be now? Ram should be equal to what now? Ram should be equal to two times ninety six thousand five hundred, right? times what? 13.1 all over 7.2 times 5,400 I heard two what? 2528 mm -hmm. 300 300 then denominator 7.2 times 5,400 3,8,8 3,8 8, 8, 0. Again? Okay. Our RAM is what? 65.02. Approximately equal to what? 65.0. RAM. Is it not working? And the relative molecular mass of zinc is what? 65. So, you viewer, you can see that we have the cheats concerning the first Faraday's law of electrolysis. We were able to give you the derivatives of the Faraday constant, which is 96,500. We gave you the accurate value and how it was derived. Now, we use the Ramit over Chaffa to cover every calculation that involves the first Faraday's law of electrolysis. We have much things for you. Stay subscribed and remember to ask your questions. At any of the stage, you are confused. We are here, particularly for you. You are going nowhere better than this channel in your science tutorials, especially in chemistry and biology, including physics. Thank you, and stay subscribed. Our parent chain is X because it contains two carbon, and the functional group there is OH. Then we have ethanoic acid first. So at carbon number two, you notice there is OH there, and the same carbon number two there is phenyl group which gives us 2,2-diphenyl and then 2-hydroxy. In alphabetical order, there should be hydroxy before phenyl. Therefore, the name is 2-hydroxyl, 2,2-diphenyl ethanoic acid, commonly called benzylic acid.